here we go again. It's about the third or fourth time I've drawn this drawing. Calculating a lobster back bend. Uh, so what we're trying to make is this lobster back here. I've already drawn it in another video. I've drawn a half pattern here. Or well, actually a whole pattern with a 10 millimeter distance between these two to do a spot welded lap joint. This pattern I just did a... Um, I didn't put a lap in it because it would be safe for welding it together. With, you know, if it was a bit of stainless and you wanted to fully weld it, so it doesn't have a lap, it'll be just butt welded on the joints. The portion of information that we need, uh, the only portion that we need is this uh, triangle here with this outside leg, this information here with our uh, semicircle or plan view on the end of it, or half plan view. Uh, that's the only information we need to do to calculate a lobster back bend. You don't have to draw them out graphically uh, once you've um, learned how to um, calculate them. So that's what this video is about. So uh, there it is side on. You've got three full segments, one, two, and three. And it's always drawn with a half segment on the end. So we're drawing that half segment. You can see that the throat radius is 150 millimeters. Uh, the diameter is 200 millimeters. And I'm going to smash the calculator or something on the bench in a minute because the keyboard is not working. Really frustrating. So from the center of the bend, and we're going to put the joint line on that green line, so halfway. So from the center of the bend to the actual point of the throat is 250 millimeters. So dropping into the front face, I've replicated that there. I've drawn out that um, wedge, I suppose you can call it if you want. Uh, from this back point six up to the throat is uh, 350 millimeters because the first portion that uh, length is 150 and then it's 200 diameter. 150 and 250, uh, 200 is 350. So that's what we had to draw out. And I've drawn my half plan on the end here and I've numbered it from one through to six. If I had my full plan, it would go up around the top six back to zero and that would complete the pattern. So what we need to do is determine height A and minus that after we've determined height B. So B minus A gives us the data or the information or the elevational height that we're actually looking for. That's the critical piece of information. So being a right angle triangle, uh, we're looking for the opposite side on those triangles, given the fact that we've got the adjacent side, and it's tan equals opposite uh, divided by adjacent. So into the front page, um, bring this information down here. So tangent equals opposite times adjacent. If we transpose that formula so that opposite was on one side, we end up with tangent 11 and a half degrees because that's what it is. Uh, let's go back to there. It's 11 and a half, sorry, 11 and a quarter degrees. So 11 and a quarter degrees times 150 millimeters for the throat means that A equals 29.8369 millimeters. You won't be working 2.8369 millimeters. You'll probably round that to 30 millimeters. Just because I'm doing it in the, uh, in the computer, it gives it quite a high degree of accuracy. I'm just going to actually round it to 29.84. The height for B, this line here, uh, in this calculation is 10, 125, uh, sorry, 10, 11.25 times 350 because we're going right from the very throat to the heel. So that gives us a height at that point of B of 69.6. I'm going to round it to 69.62. Uh, so that's the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay those two lengths in, 29.84 and 69.62, and on the sheet. Uh, my rollout length for 200, uh, 200 millimeter diameter, uh, over here, uh, 200 millimeters times 3.142 equals 628.4 millimeters. That's the length of this line here. I've already done that. Um, I could show you that on the properties. Uh, where is it? Over here. Uh, there it is down there. 628.4 millimeters. So I've already worked that out. Because the increments step around the bend from when we lay our lines and we go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So there's 12 increments. So if we've got 6 on this side and 6 on the other side of the plane. 
So coming over here, 628.4 divided by 12 gives me an offset of 62, sorry, 52.36. So I'm going to lay those offsets in. I've actually already numbered them. So the first offset I was going to do, offset 29.84. Put that one in there. Next one was 69.62. Lay that in there, and then coming across the ends with a straight line, there we go. And now I need to break it into my 12 increments of 52.366, so an offset of 52.3666, we'll just dump that in there quickly. Here we go for our offsets. laying these all in. So that is the basic uh, square or rectangular block that the pattern is going to fit into. Uh, this, the, line, the height between these two lines is actually the height A. Uh, so it's 29.84 and the, the incline actually goes from um, that line from A across to this point out here that I've highlighted. So that all fits between these two lines here. How do we determine those positions? Well, we have some plotting factors over here that I've loaded for you. Um, so if we take B minus A, 69.62 minus 29.83, the elevational height we get is 39.83. 7, 8. Now I've already got that on the screen. Let's dump that in there so you can see it. So you can see my overall length, overall height had to be 69.62. The throat is 29.84 and the difference, this figure here, 39.78, is this figure down here in the red. So each plot, plotting factor, so 39.78 times 0 is 0. That's actually for that line. It doesn't grow at all. It stays the same. The next increment is a elevational gain between this point and this point here as a portion from this point here to this line up here. This is uh, this distance here is 0 0.067 of that vertical height. So coming over here, I've done the calculation for you for all of these. 39.78 times 0 0.067 gives us a height of 2.67. That's the next one I want to lay in. So there it is, 2.67. Take it and grab it and stick it in there. The next one is 39.78 times 0.25 gives 9.95. So offset 9.95. There it is. Next one is... 39.78 times 0.5, so it's halfway between uh, the, this, this line of A and B. So 39.78 uh, times 0.5 is 19.89, so offset of 19.89. There it is there. The next one, 39.78 times 0.75 gives 29.84, so offset of 29.84. And lastly, uh, 39.78 times 0.933 gives 37.13. There's my offset. What did I say? 37.13. And computer's freezing. And there it is there. So I've got all the information I need. Come on, it's freezing up. We're in a hurry. People are trying to learn something. So I now need to draw the curve between all of these, so I'm doing it as a spline. You will possibly use a French uh, flexi curve. Uh, some of you may just sketch between your points. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Uh, because the joint line was on three, we're starting on the middle point, so three down to two, down to one, down to zero, up to one, two, three, four, Five, six, back down to five, back down to four, back down to three, 
uh, tangent uh, int uh, what have I done? int again is it still alive? there it goes so there's a, our pattern I'm going to uh, remove all the material at the top so you can just see it slightly clearer Send here those two little points there and aligned on the end. So to zoom out, uh, I'm going to save that because I don't want to lose it. So that is a half pattern uh, of the, or well, it's actually the pattern for this rolled out portion uh, here. And if you wanted to put a lap on that, you could, uh, let's go back to this other one, this one here. So the portion I've just drawn is exactly the same as that portion there. And I've put an offset in here of 10 millimeters between these two. And I've mirror imaged this line across to this point here. These, these lines mirror image out here. All you will do when you do it, if you do it with a pencil and a T-square and a, and a compass, is you'll draw these two lines at 10 mil apart you'll lay your lines in top and bottom and actually draw the curves top and bottom of that actual line. I've simply drawn a half pattern uh, and that's actually how you do it. So in CAD, I'm only doing half of it. When you're drawing a pattern, you're going to make a lobster back bend, you're going to spot weld it, put a lap through the middle. If you're going to butt weld it, you're just not going to put a lap on it at all. So what you need to learn or watch the video a few times, use this data over here on the, up the top. Uh, this orange portion is where I got, um, you know, how I worked out my segments for 90 degrees. I had three full segments and two halves, and that told me that I had to use uh, a figure for tan of 11.25 degrees. If you're doing three segments, you'd use tan of 15 in the equation above and if you were using the mouse is freezing again if I was using six full segments it would be tan 7.5 in these equations here and if I was using eight segments because I was making something really large I would use a tan figure of 5.625 so if you can watch the video a few times see where I've got the information from hopefully that will help you uh, to learn how to calculate a, a lobster back bend uh, with a bit of practice, it's quite simple. You're not expected to get it uh, up to speed on it after the first attempt. It should take you sort of six to ten attempts at drawing them out to get them right. So don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right the first time. Uh, it's a good way if you, these days, most patterns are drawn out with a plate and sheet. Or it's cut out uh, on a laser or a um, water jet cutter sent to you. You get the rolled out pattern. Most of you, when you get the pattern, uh, we'll just probably take it and start to roll it up because that's what you've been given and you won't know how to check to see whether someone loaded it into the computer correctly. That's the biggest problem today. People need to learn how to proof patterns uh, and it's not being taught properly. But if you could work out the distance between A and B uh, with these calculations and went to line 6 and the difference between the top and the bottom, top of the curve and the, and, uh, the point of where A is, you could work out whether that length there was 39.78 millimeters, and that would determine for this particular pattern whether it was correct or not. So if you can start to apply that to proofing patterns, uh, you can actually work out how whether your pattern is correct before you start forming it up. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm starting to waffle, but uh, what I'm saying is actually correct. People need to learn how to proof patterns before they start forming them. Thank you. Leave it there.